Welcome, welcome, welcome. All right, gonna get started just a second. Clean up a little bit of a mess. Some tape pieces here. All right. Well, welcome again to another Tutorial Tuesday. My name is David Meyer. I run Minis by Meyer, Commission Paint City, as well as uh, do some paint classes uh, and uh, stream from time to time. Uh, tonight is Tutorial Tuesday. And I'm going to show you guys some very basic weathering techniques um, that I use. Um, some of these I've learned from others, and some of these are my own improvements upon it. Uh, but it's just kind of just using the same process over and over um, from one thing and so forth. Anyway, so, uh, but for, the t t for tonight, it will be, I'm using the color yellow, uh, and it's... Flash gets yellow, um, as well as Rhinox Hide, and then I'm also going to be using Lead Voucher. Uh, tools tonight as well will be some sp little light sponges, okay? And then I also got my brush, okay? Uh, and then here's what the medium we'll be using, or the, uh, what we'll be doing the weathering on. Is just a small base that I have. Uh, this is what we'll be uh, showing you how to do the way they are. Before I get started, just want to make sure that you guys uh, follow me on YouTube, Instagram, Facebook, uh, as well as Twitch, all under the name of Minis by Meyer. Uh, that's where you can find me. But until then, uh, I hope to see you there. Um, I'm going to be looking at probably starting my own Discord channel soon. I can connect with uh, all of my followers a little bit more. Uh, intimately uh, and get to know them better so uh, so anyway um, we're gonna get started here um, and uh, we'll get going so um, the base color on here is Everland Sunset to Citadel brand, brand. Uh, so hey what's up man how are you uh, Santor I'm well we're doing a little weathering tonight I'm just showing you some weathering exa examples uh, this is a very basic weathering process so um, I'm show you how to make it look like it's a little worn uh, as far as your models and such. So these are bases. This is all I'm going to be uh, painting here. Um, and this is how to do a uh, very uh, simple weathering technique. So uh, again, the bases are painted uh, with Everland Sunset color. Um, and then the other colors I'm going to be using is Rhinox Hide, Flash Gets Yellow, and lead belcher. So I covered these at the beginning. I'm just going to say them again. And this is for me to hold the base better. This is just a little uh, putty and so forth. Well, Hector, what's up, buddy? Welcome, welcome. Welcome. So, um, but yeah, this is just a very basic tutorial. So, um, weathering is, is a lot of fun for me. Um, uh, I enjoy doing it. Uh, it's, it really adds a lot of uh, depth to your characters. Or I'm sorry, your models um, makes it much more interesting. Not that that uh, a perfectly clean-looking miniature doesn't look interesting. It's just um, I feel like if they're in battle, they should have some kind of wear and tear on them. Just my personal opinion. So, uh, Scientist Sevens, hello, how are you? Um, so, but we're gonna get started here. So, first off, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna show you kind of doing scratches um, and chipped. How to do it with, with just a brush. I'm gonna show you how to do it. So, um, so what we're gonna do is we're gonna start off with uh, get our base set up. So now the color yellow. I'm, I'm using the color yellow for this purpose of this exercise. It can be any color you're using. So, but you always want to start with a uh, your base color is your darker color, and then you're gonna move up to your lighter color. In this case, the splash gets yellow. Okay. So uh, I'm gonna get started. So I'm gonna go ahead and get some of the splash gets yellow. Out. This is kind of like how to do chipping, okay, with a paintbrush. I'm shaking my paint up. And you can do scratches this way. Pretty simple. Um, just going to go ahead and lay it on my little paint tray here. Oh, flash gets yellow. It sometimes depends on what color it's against. It almost has a green color to it. To me, it does. Anyway. But thank you, everybody, for tuning in. Uh, this is a fun technique. Uh, I love to do weathering. I love it. Um, it just adds so much deep interest 
a detailed entrance to any of your, uh, your models. Okay, so first off, we're gonna start off with a big chip. And it's gonna look weird the way I do this, but, um, but we're just gonna go ahead and just do random stop, okay? Like this is the chip mark, okay? We're gonna start here, okay? I'm gonna go ahead and paint that in, all right? Well, I might have to hit that again because it's kind of uh, transparent, but that's okay. Um, we just want to kind of give it the impression that it's, it's, uh, you know, the yellow is there. So what we're going for is if you've ever seen something that has paint chipped, you're trying to get that impression of that undercoat that has a little bit of a brighter color to it. Um, in between the, this side has been exposed to dirt and oil and so forth, okay, this side. The paint underneath that side, it's got a layer to it, and that layer is a little bit brighter than the, than the top. So that's what you're going for. So you want to try to make it look like that. So, all right, so you're just making random shapes, okay? Random shapes. Pretty simple. Now, there's a saying that says less is more. So, uh, but for the purpose of this, we're just going to keep going, making random shapes. Sometimes so you can put too much weathering on your model and it actually, it actually destroys the look. Um, so you want to be very cautious with how much you put on there. Now I've seen some people put a lot. It looks amazing. So you got to use judgment on it. It's up to you. You're the artist. You're the painter. So it's a judgment call. All right, so now what we're going to do is we're going to do a scratch. Scratch. We'll do another scratch going this way. Okay. So let me get this into the camera angle. Some light colors. Okay, that's it. So I'm going to go ahead and hit it again with a little bit more yellow in the same spot. Just so it's a little bit brighter. Okay. And you can do this with all your models. You know, that you want to have a little bit of a battle-worn look to it. Okay. Now, I'm just trying to make the yellow more noticeable. Oops, sorry for shaking. And, and, and these shapes do not have to be perfect, okay? All right. So here we go. Here's the next phase. It's kind of a chipping look to it. It's what we're going for. All right, we're going back over to our Rhinox hide. I probably could do more of that. You know what, let's do that. I'm just going to do entire, going completely around with yellow. Let's do that. Let's just make this fun, okay? I like to do weathering, so this is fun for me. You're going to see how it looks when I'm done. There's another way you can do this. Um, this is using a more controlled method. You know, if you want big, ch big chunks of stripped paint chipped off. Okay, that's what this is going to create. That's correct. That's correct. They are, uh, you know, uh, Mother Nature and, and weathering has, has, has no forgiveness. It will, uh, it will do its damage regardless. All right, so I'm going to go ahead and do the uh, Rhinox side now. This is where the uh, first phase of this lesson comes into play. It's going to immediately just go, wow, it's that simple. Okay, yep, it is. All right, so this is Rhinox Hide. Now, Rhinox Hide looks like 
chocolate, okay? Just, just does, okay? <laughs> like somebody melted chocolate and put it in a, in a pot, Citadel pot. Main thing is first, make sure it's dry before you start adding in its on, okay? Move this stuff around a little bit so I can bring the paint closer to me. My right hand. All right, here we go. she is. So I'll bring this in closer to the camera. Once I get done with the first round. That one has wet paint on it still, so I'm not touching that one yet. Yep. Now you're starting to see it, right? Now there's another level of uh, interest you can do here. Um, okay, so what, what we're accomplishing is basically is making it look like it's rusted, okay? It's rusted underneath and thinks it's all kind of uh, just uh, chipped away and so forth. So um, that's kind of what we're doing. And we're going to add another level to this to kind of make it look semi-rusted, okay? So, but first, now, something about scratches. All right, you got to think about scratches before you do those. Um, so you got to think about what direction the light's hit, uh, coming from. So let's say the light's coming from this direction, okay? The scratch highlight is going to be on the bottom. It's going to be always the opposite of the light, okay? So you always want to do it. So if the light was coming from the left side over here, we would do this, the darks, this dark paint on the left side of the scratch because the light is picking up on the right side, okay? Hope that makes sense. So I'll demonstrate. Um, so I'm, I'm light coming from the right side here on this side, okay? And we'll do it again. There you go. I'm gonna zoom in on it so you can see very basic, very simple weathering technique, okay? Now you're gonna dirty it up a little more with some other stuff and some washes and whatnot. It'll all blend in together, but it's a very simple technique that you can do uh, for using your brush, okay? Now, we can add another dimension to this. This is what the lead belcher is for. Okay, so you can say it's semi-rusted, all right? Shaking up the lead belcher. A little water. That's it. Y'all are going to like the next one. 
All right, so it's not completely rusted yet. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna go in here and get in here just a little bit. I'm gonna find spots in here, kind of give the impression the rust has not made its way home all over. Now this is up to you if you want to do this kind of stuff. If you don't want to make it look uh, completely rusted, uh, you don't have to. Completely up to you. But not everything is covered in rust sometimes. So there. So it's kind of like you can see the metal underneath, but it's starting to rust. Pretty simple. Okay? All right. So we're going to move away from that one. Now we're going to do another one. Now where did that one have? Okay. Oh, I don't like yellow down there, but that's okay. All right. This one's a little bit uh, easier. I should say it's a lot easier. Um, but it has less control. I'm going to take a little sponge. Okay. And break it off and uh, I have mine's in the shape of a square it doesn't really matter as long as it's, it's fits for the size that you're in the surface area you're working on okay so we're gonna start with the same color rotation I'm gonna go to the yellow and then we're gonna go to the rhinox hide okay so uh, go ahead and what I'm gonna do so you can watch me I'm gonna dip this you got to get some of it off because it gets kind of powerful and then we're just going to go around. Okay. Pretty easy. Okay. Let's go around. Let's go ahead and do this. Pull a couple spots up here. So now let's show you how it looks. Just a brighter yellow, okay? So while that's drying, let's go and get that off. Get this yellow off. Sorry for the shaking camera. Okay. Now what we're going to do is we're going to get some of this brown. The rhinox hide, dip it in there. And start hitting it with the same thing. Oops. And then I'm going to throw a couple on top. So it looks a little warm now. There you go. Now you can see. Pretty easy. And the reason I used the lighter yellow is because it gives the impression that some of the paint is starting to wear away um, on this in this process. Um, now you can go again just a little step further. And you can grab some of that lead belcher, just a little bit. Make sure it's all off. You can go ahead and just dab it a few times. Not a lot. So, and that's it. It just adds a little more interest to it. Okay? So the reflection keeps on hitting it. Let me move on. So that is the two weathering steps. Now you can go from main color to the light color and forget about this. Just go to a lead belcher color. Let me show you what I mean. I'm gonna get you I'm gonna get a model I'm doing right now. It's 
it's just the paint has worn off and is not rusted at all. So you can see the weathering on it that I've done. And all this is, is on the leg, you can see, all this is, is originally it was all blue. And then I went in with lead belcher and a sponge and I went along the edges, okay? Followed it all along. You can see, pretty simple to do, okay? Did it along the back as well. Just lead belcher along the back. Okay. So, any questions, any comments, anything you guys uh, want to see on the next tutorial? Appreciate any feedback. Any, any, uh, anything I'm good with. I'll wait a few minutes to see if I got any questions in the chat. Um, but, uh, yeah, weathering is a lot of fun. I, I really enjoy it. It is one of my favorite methods to use in painting. Um, I use it quite a lot. Uh, and, uh, oh, here's a, I'll show you another. Here's another thing I use weathering. Now, there's a lot to weathering. I'm only touching the surface on it. But like this guy that I did, uh, this is mine. Um, I did uh, weathering powder, I did all that, so this guy here, I did significant weathering on him, battle damage, so, he's Alpha Legion, so, You can have a lot of fun with weathering. I, I enjoy it immensely. So, okay. Uh, if there's no other questions, then I'm going to get ready to sign off. Uh, but, uh, you know. Oh, hey, Saint, uh, did you have any other questions on the, on the weathering and so forth? Happy to hang on for you. I don't know if you saw the, the second. Uh, did you see the... Um, Storm surge that I was weathering. I'll show it again on the camera. I'll show you the weathering I did on the storm surge. So here's the storm surge that I was working on. You can see I didn't, I'm not using the Rhinox hide on it. I just went with the base color, then a lighter color. And then I use lead belts around the sponge, and then I get this weathered steel look. So, um, you can do weathering in a lot of different ways. Um, this way, it's not so, it's just the paint has just been through a lot. Um, when I start to darken it up, it really starts to pop. So, um, what did that say? <laughs> so, um, but yeah, this is uh, the storm surge. Um, but uh, again, this is that's how simple this is, is base color, then a lighter color with the sponge, like I did here, okay? All I did was, that's it. Now the Rhinox hide, I didn't use it on this. I'm not planning to. So, um, but uh, yeah, you can make some really good stuff. Now, there's a lot more to weathering, uh, there's chipping. Uh, medium you can use, there's weathering powders, there's uh, enamels, there is, it's a big world. I am only showing you the simplest way to get uh, quick results and stuff that's fun to do, easy, and you can master very quickly. Um, this is typically for what you would use on like uh, flat armor and right around the corners uh, is what you would use this for. Um, I did use some of the uh, scratches on this uh, Space Marine. As you can see, I did some scratches on him. Right about there. Uh, this, this, this paint job is two years old, though. Um, so, 
Um, so, yeah. What other questions you got there? Anybody? Okay, the most exposed bits, yeah, where the second base looks more like uh, long-term wear on a, on a wide, flat surface after effects. Yeah, exactly, from explosives and so forth. That's exactly right. Um, um, I've got a tank that I did, uh, chipping medium and so forth. Um, a shrap like shrap, that's, that's it. You know, you can do a lot of amazing things with this, uh, this technique. Um, you can actually put it together with this. You can put them together. Um, let me get my tank. I'll show you my tank. I did both of them. So this is the tank. I did this one two years ago. Yep, Stellaris music, that's correct. So this is the tank. I'm going to take the turret off. <laughs> yeah, Predator is pretty good. So, um, yeah, I did this one two years ago. Um, this is for, uh, so look at all the scratches. I did scratches on him here. I did the same method that I used, just showed you guys. Now, these are Tyranid scratches, okay? Uh, this has been in a battle with Tyranids. Um, and let's see, got scratches, chipping. I mean, this thing has seen better days. So, um, but it's still moving around doing damage. So lots of scratches. So it got to the exhaust. This is from the muffler, whatever you want to call it. So, uh, like I said, you know, there's a lot of things you can do with it um, and so forth. And just have fun. It, it, that's exactly the way I designed it. Um, so, but yeah, um, I, you know, I uh, hope you, uh, you know, can benefit from this. So, <laughs> have fun, tell some stories, get some scars on them. Pretty much that's what this is. Um, but yeah, just, man, you can, you can do some amazing things. I have on my Instagram um, a towel devilfish that I did for somebody. I love the way that that came out weathered because it's like the de devilfish had been flying so fast and it was in so many battles and so forth that the paint on the front and all the front extremities had worn away. And uh, that, that it's, it's in my, uh, on my Instagram, Minis by Meyer. It's a towel devilfish. It's red. Really cool. I love the way that one came out. I don't have it anymore. It's not mine. I painted for somebody else. So, but uh, that's the thing with Infinity Maze too. They're a bit too clean sometimes, where they should really use some signs of wear. And our 40K stuff is great for weathering. So, so I do. Uh, actually, it's on my Instagram. Uh, the uh, Devilfish is on my Instagram. Um, and then I have done weathering on Infinity Minis. I've got one right here, as a matter of fact. Um, here's weathering I did on one. You ask, and here you go. Uh, so, you look, he's supposed to have white stripes down his side, okay? But that's wet weathering, it's chipped armor. So, uh, let's see. That's the only one I have that has uh, any battle damage out of all the Infinity Minis I'm working on. So, but, uh, yeah. Uh, so, uh, okay, there's a unit for that would be having. These guys are it. They're for boarding actions. Yeah, well, um, I've got a bunch of Infinity Minis to paint, uh, so I'm working on those separately. Uh, I'm probably going to be working on this tonight uh, separately. Uh, and uh, off camera, of course, and so. Um, so, Big Molesky is here. What's up? What's up, Mo? Thank you for the follow. Um, so, that being said, uh, with if you're saying thank you for the follow, um, if 
you check out my Instagram, you'll see the devil fish I was telling you about. I pretty much everything I paint is on my Instagram. So uh, it's Minnie's by Meyer. Uh, you can find, uh, you know, the devil fish is it's probably about a year old, so it's way back down, but you'll see it. Um, and then uh, I did some Yujing in a uh, weathered look. Uh, they're, they're in there as well. I have a lot of Yujing in there. Uh, so I, you know, yeah. Infinity, I understand they look so clean, but you know my client that I paint the, painted them for, he wanted them in a uh, nice, uh, I shouldn't say nice, but a weathered look. So that's what I did. So, but these are O12s that I'm painting now. Uh, they're kind of a more cleaner look, and that's the style that I'm going with. So, but cool. So, but uh, all right. Uh, any other questions? Anybody got anything they want to ask? Any, any before I sign off? Yeah, I'm just uh, ready to get back at the other stuff that I've been working on. I don't know if anybody saw the um, these guys that I painted and working on. Oh, so yeah, U12 of space, UN essentially has Eugene might be on the. Okay, yeah, there are these sensors. Okay, yeah. I, I like the way they came out. They were really nice um, and so forth. So, but yeah, this is, uh, I'm doing six of these right now and so forth. Um, just kind of mixing it up. Um, talking about weathering. Here's a, um, another one I did weathering for. I'm going to back my camera up so you can see this. I did the posing on this guy. This is for a client. And why does it have fur on it? Probably my dog. Yeah, I made this pose. Freaking love the pose, came out great. Yeah, I have two more of these to do. Oh, that's no problem. Yeah, I don't mind the, the lore, dude. That's perfectly fine. Yeah, this is uh, like shield activated. Uh, this is a... Um, yes, Riptide, yes. That's a Riptide. I have two more to paint of those. So, okay, well, um, I'm going to sign off from here, um, but uh, you guys can always follow my immediate progress on Instagram. Please follow me on Instagram, uh, YouTube, or Facebook, Minis by Meyer. Uh, I'm here on Twitch, as you can see, but, and I try to do these every Tuesday. I've been trying to stream more regularly, but my, my internet bandwidth has just been crappy lately, and uh, this is about the extent of what I can manage right now, so, uh, so but yeah. But, uh, hey, I appreciate you guys. If you got any questions, then you're more than welcome to shoot me an M, a message through uh, uh, Instagram. Uh, you can also reach me in, on uh, email, minisbymeyer uh, at hotmail.com. So, all right, everybody. Y'all have a good evening. We'll see you guys next time. Uh, next Tuesday, I'll do another tutorial. If you guys have a suggestion on a tutorial you want me to cover, um, shoot me a message. I will definitely look at it. So, appreciate you guys. Y'all have a good